Okay, so yeah, uh, that's, uh, that's me. That's my Twitter account in case you want to ask anything or complain about the low quality of what I'm saying or whatever. Uh, make fun of me, it's quite easy, so don't worry about that. Uh, I'm going to tell you how we are using uh, two Google tools, uh, BigQuery and uh, AppScript for doing analytics at Chiawaki. Uh, and, uh, well, I'm not actually the CEO of the company, yes, uh, one of the founders, we don't have a CEO, it's like, okay, it's like, whatever. So, uh, what's, yeah, we are, the, the startup is two people, a company, uh, we just launched the service like in public in February, we have like 500 users at the moment trying to get more, it's a startup, you know, it's not like, a, yeah, Snapchat is also a startup, different kind of startup, that's it. So. Yeah, what we are doing is a, is a service for software developers to communicate with each other. Uh, so if you are a developer, or you have a team of developers, and you need to exchange information like interesting links, documentation, gossip, life hacks, uh, sort of messages with other developers, you can just use uh, Chiawaki. Basically, we have like groups or teams in Chiawaki with different people, and. Uh, also, uh, each person can be in a lot of different teams at the same time. So, you know, by using this, you can be uh, up to date what's happening across all your teams. If you are like uh, working in uh, your company and also part of an open source team, if you are a developer which is going to meetups or you are doing like freelancing for different clients or you still want to be in touch with people in your former company, whatever, you can be in touch with all of them at the same time. Uh, you can s just uh, send sort of messages to all of them or just to people around an area, uh, share your mistakes, uh, share links, whatever, uh, talk about code, talk about the tools you are using, or talk about uh, how you are organizing your service. So that's the company, just a quick overview so you can understand what, is, uh, what we are doing and what we want to measure. This is a website so far. So since it's a website, of course we have analytics. We have Google Analytics, which are amazing. We like to think we're using analytics like professionally because you know, before starting this company, we've been doing software for 15 years. And yeah, analytics are amazing because you can have not only cool numbers, but also visualizations. Like for example, Google Analytics, out of the box, just put the uh, analytics uh, uh, script and it's going to give you like visualizations, how people are moving across your page. So first they are going to uh, the home page, from here they are going to the help page, login, whatever. You can also drill down and, no, I want to see this only for the UK, because you, you were saying before like all the other countries. So analytics are amazing, as we saw, you know, you can do like cool things. Things. Also, we are a small company, I told you already, and uh, I really don't have the time for being like all day long, like uh, watching my numbers and seeing, oh, I don't know, I'm going to really think about a really interesting way of extracting intelligence from my data. So a good thing about Google Analytics, it's going to give you automatically some alerts, like for example, hey, we have more users, we are having, uh, I don't know, more space views, whatever, this was unexpected, so that's for free. You are getting a lot of insights without you doing anything because you don't have the time or I don't have the money for hiring a data scientist. If any data scientist wants to work for free, that's cool, but I don't know of any. But, so the thing is, you know, Google Analytics are amazing. But there is a problem, it's like you can't always use Google Analytics because Google Analytics are built for web applications. So you have a web application, you put the JavaScript code, everything is working. If you have a mobile application, you can also make it work. But in Chiawaki, we have a service which is for software developers. We integrate with ex external services, like I don't know, if someone is, if a developer is putting code into the system, deploying a new version into production, found a new bug, whatever, and they are using different tools for that, we are aggregating that data also into Chiawaki. And that data is not coming from the web. It's coming from something called the API. And the API looks dirty, looks like this. This is not a web, this is not a web page. So we are getting information from different, from different places which are not on the website. And maybe you are thinking, but I don't have an API. Still, you have a lot of uh, probably offline information. Like if you have an e-commerce and you are uh, delivering goods, uh, physically goods to, to someone, if you want to know 
how long is your del delivery uh, time, if you are doing um, right or wrong, you don't have that on the website. If you have a call center and you are getting like a call to someone wanting to cancel the account, that's not on the website. So there are a lot of information that, that is uh, out of the website and it's out of the control of Google Analytics. But it's really important for us knowing what's going on. Even if the information is not coming to the website, it's important for my business. So we wanted to have a solution in which we could uh, have analytics on all that information which is coming from other sources. And uh, since the first moment, well, this is what I told already. So since the, since the first moment, we thought this was like a big data problem. First, because it sounds cool, big data is the new buzzword. And second, because actually we're going to have like lots of data in the system. The moment we are tracking every visit to the system, we're going to have big data. So since I'm assuming not every one of you understand what is big data, maybe yes, I can be wrong here, but I didn't knew it until not so long ago. There is like this definition which is like big data is when your data is like really too big, like much bigger than the one you are used to, or when it moves too fast, if you have like too many things coming at the same time, or, or when it's like really, really weird to fit it like into your system. So in our case, I told you we have like 500 users, uh, and at the moment we already have like uh, over a million and a half rows of data. So 500 users, over a million rows of data in a month and a half. So yeah, the data we have from the analytics is much, much bigger than the one we have our system prepared for. So we were thinking, okay, we need to find a big data solution so we can put a lot of data in the system and then do something with it. And we wanted to have, uh, this, was, this was like the wish list. The system for having analytics shouldn't be intrusive. It shouldn't slow down the user experience. Uh, second thing, we want to have the history and uh, avoid any vendor lock-in. If now I'm using BigQuery, but uh, I don't go for Google, maybe a year from now, six months from now, I find a better solution, I'm going to move out. Because, you know, I, I just want to have like the best solution I can afford, so it should be for free, basically. <laughs> so I, I need, or really cheap. So, you know, I want to have all the data, I don't want like vendor lock-in. And I want to have interactive queries, meaning that every time I want to have new information, I don't want to write a report, configure a lot of things, having to develop the thing myself, or if I'm not a developer, hiring someone. So I should have the capability for running interactive queries to the system. It has to be cheap because, you know, we are two people, not a big company. If I have to choose between paying for analytics or paying for lunch, lunch is going to win almost all the time. And if it's real time, that will be amazing. We don't need it, but that will be amazing. So it's like, first problem, you're going to have like uh, millions of data. Where are you going to store those data? And uh, not also store, also having a backup and all those things. So this solution is quite easy. There is something called Google Cloud Storage. If you are not familiar with this, uh, maybe you are familiar with something called Amazon S3. If you are not familiar with this anyway, it's like a cloud storage. It's somewhere where you put like large files and it's like really, really, really cheap. In our case, uh, a story like this uh, millions and a half rows, it's costing us like 0, 000, 000, 000, 000 something per month, which is like okay for us. We have that money. It's like we don't have funding, but we have savings, you know? So that, that's cool for us. So cloud storage, that's quite easy. It was like the first thing. Storing the, the data is not a problem anymore today. It was a few years ago. You need to have like huge servers. This was terribly expensive. That's not a problem. That's it. Second thing, this is a problem today. It's like, okay, so you have like millions of data, two, two billion rows, whatever. How you are going to run queries over the data? Because if you have been around IT for a bit, you know like running a complex query, it can take a while. So I don't want my queries to take a while. I want it like right now. I mean like in the next 10 seconds. So how can I do that? We were researching, there are some big data solutions. It's like, this is like a, two of them are open source, the other is Amazon, you have to pay for that. Something called Hadoop, which is like a, something amazing for doing big data. Cassandra, blah, blah, they are too complex. You need to install your own servers or have like a, a farm of servers on the cloud, whatever that means. And then you have to be like putting, turning it up and down. If something is broken, you have to, you know, manage to fix it. We are two people, we don't have the time for this. We, we actually know how to use these tools. It's just, we don't have the, you know, large enough team or money 
for this to be cost effective. Amazon Redshift is hosted in the cloud. It's more cost effective than the others because you know if, if you have like not really 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 billions of uh, of rows because you know you, you can you just pay for the use. But running with Amazon is you you pay for how long the system is running. So I have to be if I want to query the system like now, I start the system, I import the data, I run the queries, and I stop it. Because if I don't stop the system, I'm going to be paying for the minute. Every, every minute is working, you have to pay. You don't pay much, but you have to be like, a start it, a stop it. Uh, now I want like two servers, now I want like 10 servers. So it's better for us than this, but still it's not good enough. So we found this thing called Google BigQuery, and this was amazing for us. Because Google BigQuery is exactly what we were looking for. It's like data analytics as a service. So this means you put data there, you put in the data, and it works. I didn't do anything else. It was like, oh, it sounds like just a ticket for us. And it was. It's, a, it's built for a scale. It's based on something called Dremel. Dremel is an internal tool that Google developed. They were using it intensively for a lot of things, like for managing AdWords and all those things. So that's internally what they are using. And it's designed for petabytes of real-time data. Petabytes of data means like something that you truly don't have. If you have that trolling, that's not a trolling to have. That's really a bless. So, you know, uh, it's, it's designed for having like those data, real time, that's quite cool. Loading data is quite easy. You just send a file, a text file, or JSON, if you are a developer and you prefer JSON, just send a, you know, from any tool in the world, you can convert to text file. Just send a text file there, it's going to be stored. And in the next few seconds, you can already get data from there. How many of you are familiar with the concept of SQL? Like databases, SQL, whatever. Yeah, a few of you. Okay, SQL has been around like for 25 years, longer than some of you. So the thing is, SQL is like a, a standard language in which you can basically access into databases. And um, big data, now it's a trend that you know you can already use SQL f with some tools for uh, querying your data. So if I store data on BigQuery, I can do something like, give me the name of all the users ordered by date, and it's going to give you the name of the users by date. It's quite easy to understand. Or give me how many users I have in total, or give me the maximum date of users, so for knowing which was like the latest registration, for example. Or give me the total of the orders of each user, group by user. So it's an easy enough language. So if you already know SQL, you already know how to use BigQuery. And uh, it has some extensions, like for analytical things, like percentiles and uh, variance and all these things. If you are like you know, a statistician and you want to do more things, they have some extensions. But basically, it's like SQL, like quite easy to, uh, to use already. If you have a developer in your team, they know SQL already. If you have a developer in your team and they didn't, don't know SQL, you probably want to find for another developer, but uh, don't tell them I told you. So this is how it looks. When you go to the website of uh, BigQuery, they have also like an ugly API. If you like APIs, that's amazing. I like them. But if not, you have like the you know the web console, and yeah, you just run the query. You click on run, and then you get the results. How cool is that? It's like. And I'm really doing this like ACC, uh, apparently. Uh, there is one thing, you see that green button on the right? It's called the validation button, but to me it's like the startup button. Because in BigQuery, you are going to pay for how many data you are querying. So before running a query, you want to be sure you are not going to be uh, searching in too many tables. Uh, the thing is, if you have like, in, in your, in your uh, you are storing, uh, the users, the IP address, the email, the uh, last visit, whatever, and you only want to know when was the last visit, you should only ask for the last visit column. Because if you ask for more columns, you are going to pay much for that particular query. So the green button there, when you click on that, is going to tell you, hey, I'm going to go over, I don't know, one gigabyte of data. And it's like, no, you know, I prefer to go only about half that. So you can just fine-tune your query before actually launching it so it's going to be cheaper. So you know the startup button to the right, that's important. You can do, we're doing little things, like for example, who is my most active user? Because segmentation is amazing. If you can segment by people which are coming on Saturday morning from the US, that's cool. But if you can segment by, give me this particular user, the one with the ID 105, I know that's the user I want to take care of. 
not because he's part of this second main group, no, it's because I'm sending the ID so I can actually identify single users using my API. I have all the history, I can see whatever a single user has been doing throughout the whole life of the application. Single users, that's cool, because you know, you can really target people. Imagine you have a problem and then you write a support email, you can see if the user has been using the tool again after the support email or not. So that's quite cool, you can really segment the way you want. Uh, of course you can segment by country or whatever you want to do. Uh, we are using it for many things, like for example, even for performance things. We like, you know, we are developers, so we are querying the data to see how people are using it to see if we can uh, improve our performance. But basically, depending on your data, you can imagine creative ways of using it. Uh, this, for example, is one of the KPIs. It's like how many new users have per month. So we, we, wanted, we like to know how many users are using the tool. And we want to compare with the, with the past month. So we are sure the trend is OK. So you know, writing something which is not that difficult, we are just getting how many users are using the tool. Uh, and if you want to go like, more creative, you can get like something a bit ugly. This is not actually ours, it's from people from GitHub, it's another software company. And you know, this uh, query is doing something like, give me all the projects that are being created every day, and out of those projects, give me the projects that are being watched at the moment by most users. So it's like trending repositories on a single query, over billions of rows, these people have like over 8 million users. So over billions of rows, every day they are having like this query for getting the trending repositories and sending it via email. Which is like, it looks a bit weird, but if you think like, okay, this is going to serve like billions of rows, 8 million users, it's like short enough. And still, I can see your faces now, and they look like this. It's like, what was that? Exactly. Because, you know, I don't want to be like writing these queries all the time and figuring out, because I prefer Excel, or, well, sorry, Google Spreadsheets, Excel. I prefer Google Spreadsheets, you know? So, uh, to me, data, it's much more convenient if I can see just columns and numbers and uh, some fancy graphics. This is like new user sample. This is like users that have been deleted the account. Fortunately, they are like a, a more less, so it's like, Oh, so you can export directly from BigQuery to Google Express it? No, you can't. I'm sorry, but you can't. It's like, whoa, what are you telling me? But there is something called, yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I feel your pain now. You can export to CSV, which is close enough, okay? But there is something called uh, Apps Scripts, which is also from Google, and it's for cheap, uh, for free, totally for free. And with Apps Scripts, it's something, it's like JavaScript, like a smaller set of, if you already know JavaScript, you know more than you need, because it's like a smaller set of JavaScript. So AppScript is something that lets you interact with most of Google APIs. Uh, so if you want to interact with uh, Google Drive, with BigQuery, with Google Analytics, with uh, Gmail, any, almost uh, all of the uh, Google APIs, I would say, except AppWords, I'm not totally sure about that. You can do that. So, what I have done, what we have done in the company, is we have this script, which is reading data from BigQuery, then creating a, a, a spreadsheet on our Google Drive, and then sending an email. So every morning, 9.30 in the morning, I get this email with my capo indicators telling me, okay, these are the new users for the month, these are the other users, and this is the link to the spreadsheet if you want to drill down the data and do whatever you want. Is this difficult? You have to program a bit, but it's quite easy, I would say. Uh, for example, this is like the, the uh, app script is something that runs on the web. You don't need to install anything. You just go to a script, so google.com or something like that, and then you start a new project and that's it. It's part of the Google Drive. So what I'm doing here is, okay, I go to Google Drive and I, uh, I get the API stat folder. I have a folder in Google Drive. I'm creating a new spreadsheet with the date of today. Then I just uh, put in there the new users I have per month that are coming from BigQuery, the deleted users, and sending the email. Sending an email, oh sorry. Sending an email, oh, this, this is what I have in, a, in, in my API stats folder now. It's like for every day I have a spreadsheet, which is the one I showed you before. Sending an email is as easy as okay. I want to send an email to this person, copy to this person, this is the subject, this is the body, this is the attachment and you are sending an email like that. So sending emails from app scripts, it's quite easy. 
and this is what the email looks like when I get it in the morning. It's like, okay, this is your drive, and these are your two key pay at the moment. So cool. Every morning I'm having this information. And getting it from BigQuery is a bit weird, like the JavaScript here, but basically this is the query I was talking to before, the one I showed you before. So you can write it on the web on the console, or just put it here. So every day we are running this thing, we are getting the document, and we are getting the email. If you are going to use BigQuery, and you want to have this subscript, just tell me, I can just set them for you. So the only thing you will need to change is, here you have to put your queries, here you have to put your user ID number, which is something internal on your Google account, and here you have to put your email, because you don't want to send the analytics to me, but to you. But if you want to use this, just ask me later, I will share it, and that's cool. You're going to think, this is really expensive, because someone was speaking before about BigQuery, and he said something about, it's quite cheap, cheaper than the others, $20,000 per month, they were like $20,000 per month, come on. So, yeah, uh, if you are quite big, it's, uh, it's that cheap, $20,000 per month, but for us it's like this. Cloud storage, you pay like nothing. In our case, storing a million rows, it costs in dollars, it costs this number. I don't know how to pronounce this number, it's like 0000092. In pounds, it's like nothing. And for BigQuery, which is a bit more expensive, I'm finishing now. BigQuery is more expensive. I have like, okay, this is the price. So I'm paying for a million rows, this amount of pounds per month. And for the storing, I'm paying this other amount. So in total, this is what I'm paying for having big data analytics about any data you want, because you can send there any data you have in your company. This is what I'm paying per each million rows I have. Actually, this is wrong. Because just yesterday I knew that the first 100 gigabytes of queries you do, they are for free on BigQuery every month, but they just uh, made this better. The first terabyte is for free. So yeah, this is it's going to be even cheaper for next month. So this is what it costs to me to have the system, and I can afford this. So yeah, I have all the goals that I wanted, non-intrusive, I have the history, it's cheap, it's real time if you want. I don't, want, I don't need it to be real time, but it is. And uh, that's what I wanted to say. If you know how to do things, you can also do big things and uh, use big data, even if as a startup, sometimes you feel you are in underwear. <laughs> so thank you for that. <laughs> Sorry, I know.